December 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Micah chapters 4 and 5 from the Old Testament. In the future, the Lord's Temple Mount will be the most important mountain of all. It will be more prominent than other hills. People will stream to it. Many nations will come saying, come on, let's go up to the Lord's Mountain, to the Temple of Jacob's God, so he can teach us his commands and we can live by his laws. For Zion will be the source of instruction. The Lord's teachings will proceed from Jerusalem. He will arbitrate between many peoples and settle disputes between many distant nations. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not use weapons against other nations and they will no longer train for war. Each will sit under his own grapevine or under his own fig tree without any fear. The Lord who commands armies has decreed it. Though all the nations follow their respective gods, we will follow the Lord our God forever. In that day, says the Lord, I will gather the lame and assemble the outcast whom I injured. I will transform the lame into the nucleus of a new nation and those far off into a mighty nation. The Lord will reign over them on Mount Zion from that day forward and forevermore. As for you, watchtower for the flock, fortress of daughter Zion, your former dominion will be restored, the sovereignty that belongs to daughter Jerusalem. Jerusalem, why are you now shouting so loudly? Has your king disappeared? Has your wise leader been destroyed? Is this why pain grips you as if you were a woman in labor? Twist and strain, daughter Zion, as if you were in labor. For you will leave the city and live in the open field. You will go to Babylon, but there you will be rescued. There the Lord will deliver you from the power of your enemies. Many nations have now assembled against you. They say Jerusalem must be desecrated so we can gloat over Zion. But they do not know what the Lord is planning. They do not understand his strategy. He has gathered them like stalks of grain to be threshed at the threshing floor. Get up and thresh, daughter Zion, for I will give you iron horns, I will give you bronze hooves, and you will crush many nations. You will devote to the Lord the spoils you take from them and dedicate their wealth to the sovereign ruler of the whole earth. But now slash yourself, daughter surrounded by soldiers. We are besieged. With a scepter they strike Israel's ruler on the side of his face. As for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, Seemingly insignificant among the clans of Judah, from you a king will emerge who will rule over Israel on my behalf, one whose origins are in the distant past. So the Lord will hand the people of Israel over to their enemies until the time when the woman in labor gives birth. Then the rest of the king's countrymen will return to be reunited with the people of Israel. He will assume his post and shepherd the people by the Lord's strength by the sovereign authority of the Lord his God. They will live securely, for at that time he will be honored, even in the distant regions of the earth. He will give us peace. Should the Assyrians try to invade our land and attempt to set foot in our fortresses, we will send against them seven shepherd rulers, make that eight commanders. They will rule the land of Assyria with a sword, the land of Nimrod with a drawn sword, our king will rescue us from the Assyrians, should they attempt to invade our land and try to set foot in our territory. Those survivors from Jacob will live in the midst of many nations. They will be like the dew the Lord sends, like the rain on the grass that does not hope for men to come or wait around for humans to arrive. Those survivors from Jacob will live among the nations in the midst of many peoples. They will be like a lion among the animals of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, which attacks when it passes through, it rips its prey, and there is no one to stop it. Lift your hand triumphantly against your adversaries. May all your enemies be destroyed. In that day, says the Lord, I will destroy your horses from your midst and smash your chariots. I will destroy the cities of your land and tear down all your fortresses. I will remove the sorcery that you practice and you will no longer have omen readers living among you. 
I will remove your idols and sacred pillars from your midst. You will no longer worship what your own hands made. I will uproot your images of Asherah from your midst and destroy your idols. I will angrily seek vengeance on the nations that do not obey me. God, I love how powerfully Micah talks about you, uh, salvation, sovereignty. It's pretty amazing. When he's talking about Babylon in this particular section, it says you will go to Babylon, but there you will be rescued. There the Lord will deliver you from the power of your enemies. So other prophets had told them, they're going to Babylon. They're messing up. They're going to be exiled to Babylon. But then you would return them, a remnant out of that, you would return them. And you would control their enemies in order to do your bidding. Uh, Micah goes on to say, but they do not know what the Lord is planning. They do not understand his strategy. He has gathered them like stalks of grain to be threshed at the threshing floor. So using uh, their enemies to your glory for your kingdom. It's absolutely amazing. And I love how Micah writes this. You know, so often, like we were talking about Jonah a few days ago, so often we're put in situations where we're like, oh, woe is me and whining and all these things are against me. And especially on Facebook, we seem to <laughs> overshare on Facebook and Twitter and other social sites. But yet... I suspect a lot of your people said that as they were headed to Babylon, as they were being trudged into Babylon, uh, shown off as being captives of a war. I suspect for a lot of them, they were definitely, woe is me. Uh, God hates me. I totally have done wrong. This is the worst of the worst. And again, as I mentioned, just like Jonah, we need to remind ourselves that you put us in those situations for all the right reasons, to teach us whatever you need us to learn. Um, and if we follow Micah's thought process, his fabulous writing, we see something amazing where the people are disheartened. Um, they're in pain, like they, and Micah equates it to labor, like a lot of the prophets do, <laughs> equate it to labor. And we see them go from severe pain being uh, exiled into Babylon coming out or it talks about the remnant coming out and then the people like do and then he starts to compare them to a lion among the nations a lion in the forest such powerful imagery and you know I I sit and think about what the Babylonians sorry, not the Babylonians, your people were doing before you exiled them into, into Babylon. And I think about my life and all the horribly wrong choices I made. And you truly sent me into exile. And it was a great thing. But then to bring us out of exile alone should be a blessing. Sending us to exile, blessing. We learned our lesson. Bringing us out of exile, huge blessing. But you're like, I'm not even going to stop there. I'm going to move you from salvation to victory I am going to make you fellow heirs of heaven okay God that's just crazy <laughs> crazy amazing we don't deserve even the first blessing which is to be sent into exile to learn what it is we're supposed to learn uh, but yet we see Jonah being sent into exile into that fish to learn what he needed to and he praised you we see your people being sent into Babylon as being exiled into that other nation. And we do see some of some of them praise you. Some of them get it right, like Daniel. And you bring them out, the remnant out. And we see some people praising you in the, in the temple part. And you're like, I'm not done yet. I will continue to love you and protect you and guide you, provide you grace and mercy, compassion, I love you so much that I want you to do what is right. Don't you get this? And and I totally understand, God, you and I have had this conversation way more than a million times. <laughs> because a lot of times I don't get it. Not the first 500,000 times. And then I'm slow learning. Like I keep wanting to go back to my old ways that are bad for me. They're bad choices. They send me in wrong directions. 
they definitely don't glorify you or your kingdom. And you gently come around again and shoo me off into the other direction. And if I keep heading back, you shoo me a little bit harder. And then sometimes there's discipline involved because I'm not listening again. I'm astounded at how much you love us. That's one of the things I love about Micah. He shows your compassion in such a great mirror against all this evilness that's going on. All the evilness that you're using to help guide your people, love your people, discipline your people. It's truly amazing. God, today is, as we go through our life today and we might be in those situations or in the future we might be in those situations, Remind us of these stories, these powerful stories, Jonah and Daniel and Micah's uh, great prophetic messages. You want what is best for us. Always. There's not a single time where you don't. You never remove that from us, which is astounding unto itself. Allow us, the next time we get into one of those situations, to praise you and worship you and thank you for all that you do for us. We may be squirming a little bit where we're at because it's uncomfortable. Maybe it's really painful. Maybe it's sad. Maybe it's hurting us. That's okay. Those are human emotions and they're okay to feel. But even in the midst of all of that, we should still praise and worship you. Thanking you for allowing us to learn, allowing us to thank you for your guidance. And most of all, just be in awe of the love that you have for us. And the way that we can glorify you is by showing that same love to other people. Understanding that other people are going to do things wrong too. And we should give them grace. Because you did. We should give them mercy. Because you did. There was a great quote posted by my pastor today uh, that came from Pastor John Piper on 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And he said, good deeds do not pay back grace. They borrow more grace. God, thank you for being our sovereign God of grace. We so don't deserve grace. We don't deserve these blessings. We don't deserve the discipline. Not in the way we think of it. We don't deserve the loving discipline, the correction. God, I only hope and pray that my life can do some good for you. That my heart will reflect you (laughs) and your grace that you have literally drowned me with in my life. Your grace truly is sufficient for us. Way more sufficient. In your son's name I pray. Amen.